Unfortunately, Wells Fargo thinks the team I work on is expendable. Last October, before the COVID-19 crisis hit, Wells Fargo told me, my coworkers, and 350 other people in the contact center I work at that we will no longer be needed. The bank planned to hand us our notice this March. Wells Fargo has one of the most pro well, Wells Fargo has been one of the most profitable companies in the world, and their biggest issue is customer service. Instead of investing in their employees to make their customer experience better, the bank is doing the opposite. We were part of the 26,000 jobs Wells Fargo announced it would cut over three years. The consequence of this decision is losing teams like mine, which is full of highly skilled, experienced customer service representatives. But then came the pandemic, and suddenly we went from being expendable to essential. The bank informed my colleagues and I in Concord that plans to lay us off were being put on hold for at least a couple months. Since we were considered essential and we didn't have the capabilities to work from home, we continued to go into our contact center. My coworkers and I knew our customers needed us now more than ever before, but we wanted to take our computers home with us so we could work safely. Management told us that wasn't possible. But the situation became more dire with each past day as COVID-19 cases started popping up at Wells Fargo contact centers around the country. I knew it was time to organize. I got a handful of my colleagues to sign on to a letter that we sent to a high-level Wells Fargo executive, asking to be allowed to bring our computers home. The next day, Wells Fargo reversed their stance, and within a week, we packed up our computers and we started working remotely. Actions by frontline bank workers have helped get Wells Fargo to enact more safety measures to protect workers, but there is still more that can be done. To date, workers have tested positive at call centers in Arizona, California, Iowa, North Carolina, Oregon, Texas, and Utah. And last weekend, a Wells Fargo branch in Riverside, California had to shut down because employees tested positive. Wells Fargo CEO Charles Scharf announced at this week's annual shareholder meeting that roughly 180,000 of the bank's employees are now working remotely. But that means approximately 90,000 Wells Fargo workers still need to go into work at their branch or contact center. For the last four years, I have been a member of the Committee for Better Banks, the only independent voice for frontline bank workers. We are fighting to improve working conditions and raise standards in the banking industry. It was CBB members at Wells Fargo who blew the whistle on the bank's extreme sales misconduct and toxic culture that led to the fake account scandal harming millions of customers. During this public health crisis, it is more important than ever for frontline bank workers to have a voice to ensure our safety so we can serve the flood of requests from financially distressed customers who have lost their jobs or are at risk of losing their businesses. That is why the CBB sent a letter to the CEOs of the nation's largest retail banks, including Wells Fargo, calling, them, calling on them to establish a USA Banking Crisis Committee with frontline bank workers to improve safety and meet customers' growing needs as we navigate our way through this pandemic. Foreign banks have already created similar committees in countries where frontline bank workers are members of independent trade unions, and benefit from collective and sectoral bargaining rights. COVID-19 has exposed the vulnerabilities of our banking system. Workers like me shouldn't have to demand our employers to provide a safe work environment. That is why bank workers need a voice, and it's why we need a bank worker bill of rights. Because when we have a seat at the table, not only do employees benefit, but so do our customers, and our whole banking system will become stronger, more ethical, and sustainable.